happy Halloween. Yeah, that would be fun. Alrighty, so, uh, you know, right-hand stuff before we talk about uh, Blackbird specifically. Uh, see you later, bro. Um, yeah, so the thing that uh, sets off the whole situation is having your right thumb parallel to the bass string rather than more up at this angle, which is what's intuitive, which then naturally pulls you... And, and I do mean including this part of my thumb either resting on the string or being really close versus like this angle. My wrist is still straight, um, and then these three fingers naturally will fall into a curled position. And that's the whole problem with, you know, let's say your thumb was on the fourth string, like it's going to be at the very beginning of every bell curves. Um, then right hand wise, you're, what you're having to do right now is constantly get your thumb and index out of the way of each other in this position. So that's what we accomplish here, is that we can do that, move any finger yeah, autonomously of the others, do any combination. Uh, and what your personal tendency is when you're focusing on other stuff is to start using your middle finger where you want to be using your first finger. Um, cool, so this song is super easy and we just did it because it's so easy and, and linear. So we're playing D. And we want it to sound really legato, legato, excuse me, which means not coming right back to the strings subconsciously. So we're just hovering right above the strings, trying to strike. Can't say this, emphasizing it strongly enough. F rhythm at this point. Just go over it. This is the first time you're doing this right hand stuff. You want to be consciously focused on what you're doing right now, not guessing. So. There's one. You know, stop, get good at that, stop, get good at that. It's going to be really tempting to do it twice. We're just laying the foundation for you doing a million other things. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be that. And then G, which we now know is not always G5. And if you want to do it this way, it'll be this chord. But let's just go ahead and decide you're going to get into this chord this week. G, which if you look at C and F, they're such similar shapes. That's why we need it for it. Really? So there we go. G that way, like C shape G. And we'll just, exact, everything's the same except our thumb note moves to the sixth string. So there it'll be tempting to like change your whole arm juxtaposition, so that's really what we're working on, and ideally, um, you know, when you do that, it'll really just be your thumb moves, and everything else hangs in there. You do want your, uh, so cool, so there's Everybody Hurts, and like, you know, do it if you want, it's all good. The point was to just get used to playing. Um, cool, so at three minutes plus minus in your video, we start doing Blackbird. Uh, this entire song just turns out we don't ever strike our ring finger, meaning that we're, you know, we're, and we're in the highest position wherever. These three fingers function as a unit, like we've talked about. Those are the ones we pick with, aside from in crazy world through advanced situations where you use your pinky, which are few and far. Um, so, yeah, it just turns out that he doesn't hit the first string in the entire song, um, but we do want it resting there versus, like, out of the ballpark. Um, yeah, so we're going... Those are the first two shapes, or G. And I do want you to fret this pinky note, even though we're not hitting it, just because it's going to come up so many times, that shape. And then A minor 7. Or similarly, we're not hitting that note, with, we're not striking it, but we might as well do the whole chord shape. And then we go to this, which is uh, going B in the bass and D up here, uh, which is the same thing as this as your G5 if you just took out the highs and lows. So, thinking about this B minor, B major, something I think a lot in this song is like major, minor, and anyway, this is a B minor of sorts. So. And here we do want to switch to these two strong fingers because then we're going to end up all the way up here. So people use their pinky here, I think. If you can use your ring finger, it's fine, because they're just two frets away from each other. So rhythm one in this song, one of two, is the, you know, the fucking bing, bing, bong. And then the rest of the time, we're going. That was both high and low now. Thumb index. Excuse me. The highest and the lowest note. Then we go thumb, index, thumb, index. There we are. So it starts and ends with the same thing. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Do not.
not start looping that, two total times stop, or one two total times stop. Um, this right hand movement, the entire song from here out, is either the bang bong or exactly that pattern you just played. And I wouldn't worry about the timing here, but just if you are going to lunge for it, you got a big old landmark at the 10th um, fret. So there we are. That one can be a little softly deceptive because this is in the unison. Same note, same octave are. But there we are. That is big part one. And then we go, which is C major. And then the weird spready out one, which wouldn't sound good on its own. And then we do the same exact shit two frets up, starting with like B. Which will sound bad if we didn't resolve it as well. But that's. sound weird to end there, but let's go ahead and do it. Cool. So then the third shape in the song was this one, and we're going to do that up at E minor here, which is a 7 and an 8. So we've just gone take and then it's E minor, and then your bass note backs up one fret. And those were both the same exact rhythm we played on the high G rhythm two, you know. Both picking, picking, both, both picking, picking, both. So cool. That time we were like E minor, then E flat major. Like you know, it's it's a it's two. But with adding the the G open string, it makes it all suspension so cool chords. So we just want the bing. start at the beginning, try to work from there. Great, and then we, our next section is our So that's going to start with us at the fifth fret and going And this one's kind of cool because as opposed to moving up, we just spread out into each direction. So it goes from five, seven to eight. Which we've already done, right? I always find that kind of satisfying. You know, it's like a bunch of spread out. So there you go. And that's as far as we actually got in the, in the text. Um, so we were just like... And if you like, it just backs up a fret. And goes to A7, not A minor 7. Then A minor 7. Back to G. And then that's where it recycles. If you want to do that, you can. But where we got to was... But if you get up to the end, we're cool. We're psyched. Um, and otherwise, if it ends at, you know, we're psyched, and the rest will be really easy, uh, left hand wise and right hand wise. There won't be any new concepts aside from first position chords you already kind of know. All right, man, good stuff. Uh, looking forward. Good to see you. Do do please break this stuff into small sections and finish as you go and not do the loopy thing. Um, the, you know, again, it's like memorization headspace. I'm learning these dance steps. It includes 
doing it out of rhythm, just going over what I'm going to be doing, and then switching to I'm playing, and it's our goal to do that with each little subsection, finishing as we go. Um, the other thing we talked about is just getting, like, you know, so go back over your C fingerings, and just after each one, do the point. Another thing I suggested was that you start on the root on the way up the pattern, and then when you come back down, hit all the notes. That sort of establishes, like, the, I'm mean, just playing my look in one fingering where we learned it, that this is, like, the state capital of that riff. Um, either way, we want to just, you know, one point, two, point, three, point. So, being able to do this in the key you learned it in isn't a task. It's just spending 20 minutes deciding that after each one you're going to point to. But the thing is, you need to, it needs to be you know, thinking about the hand movement and not finding C, because when you move to other keys, you you won't as readily be able to find B flat or something. Um, so if you can do a plan point positional where you just go, I'm in C, playing pattern two. Flat, playing pattern three, just thinking about I'm in A, so on, all through of seven of them, and you'll remember all of this. Um, and let's not worry about the pentatonics, aside from just clarifying that when you're in your number one pentatonic box, you totally do use your pinky here. But then when we get up here, and some stuff we talked about, let's look like, so if I'm bending on the third string, the G string, I'm pushing up with all three fingers, and I want my index finger to still be fretting. So it's like, but then when we move to the second string, it's just the same thing, but it spreads out, not moves over here, because we want to be able to go. So it's like you're pushing up with these two fingers going. Or if I wanted to go, including getting it just to pull off there, that would be a good thing for you to work on going because uh, it'll be your instinct to strike the last one and when it goes it's that your index finger wasn't fretting yet um cool and then we just talked about like doing little you know little slides into notes and bends uh and how small a percentage of the time we're actually like um but that's how everybody sounds at first man same shit all right carrie good stuff